Welcome to your Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Yes, we've got a few showers around. Not a big washout for this morning, but grab those umbrellas in case you need them, especially north of 8 Mile. You can see here over toward Mount Clemens, southern portion of, uh, of St. Clair County, including areas just south of Port Huron, like Marysville, like Marine City, and like St. Clair. Same thing south of the city of Detroit, closer to the Ohio border. Lambertville getting a decent shower right now. It's not going to last on morning, all morning, so it'll be on and off showers for this morning, midday. It'll be milder with temperatures that will be in the 50s and low 60s. 58 degrees by noontime, 62 for a high today, but just be careful on wet roads here and there for this morning and for your lunchtime hour. Sunrise this morning is at 638. We're off to a cool start right now with temperatures mostly in the middle and upper 40s to about 50 degrees, so not feeling too bad. Just watch out for those wet spots. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast at 430. Men's Warehouse. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 4.30 starts now. Well, this morning, cleanup continues over in the hometown chip after a semi crashes into a house, reducing it to the rubble that you see there on your screen. We're going to hear from the homeowner in just a little bit. Plus, a Sterling Heights family heard an explosion in the distance. And then seconds later, there was a huge crash at their door. What was it? We'll have that answer coming up in just a little bit as well. Andrew. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We have a few showers around, but we're off to a mild start on our way to a relatively warm Thursday. We'll talk more about that and your weekend forecast in just a moment. I like the sound of that. You said weekend. It's almost here, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for waking up with us at 430 on Thursday or Friday Eve, April 25th. I'm Everod Cassidy. And good morning. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Good to see you as always, Everod. Good to see you as well here in the Weather Center. It was a great day yesterday. I got a lot of landscaping done as we're officially welcoming spring in my house, you know, sprucing <laughs> things up just a little bit. Fantastic. Better than, I guess, uh, waiting until we got that rain scattered here and there. That's right. We have a little bit of rain that's out there. Not too much. So if you have outdoor plants, like Everod did. Not a bad day to do it. Just watch out for a few raindrops. And remember, you can always take the local forecasters app. You can track a lot of these showers so you know when to do your landscaping and when not to during the day. We've got some scattered showers out there just south of Port Huron. You can see that here in Marine City, right around Algonac as well with a heavier downpour. No lightning out there, so no thunderstorms to worry about. Certainly no gusty winds to worry about, too. Down closer to the Ohio border in southern Macomb County, uh, excuse me, Monroe County, I should say. Lambertville getting a shower as well over in to Luna Pier. Again, nothing too heavy. And we'll have this on and off light to moderate shower activity through this morning and through this afternoon. Not all over southeast Michigan. It's no big washout, just wet here and there. And this afternoon, a little bit drier, and it does get milder, just like yesterday. Temperatures make it close to 62 degrees, mostly low and middle 60s out there for this afternoon. Right now, we're looking at sunrise at 638. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast because there are some changes coming. All that in just minutes, Everod. All righty, Andrew, thank you. Right now it's 431, and there were two dangerous accidents that no one really could have seen coming on Wednesday, both of them happening in Macomb County. Let's start first in Sterling Heights, in the area of Mound and 17 Mile. That's where a family with two young daughters, just thankful they were in the front of their home and not the back of it, when a piece of metal came flying into their back door wall. Here's Local Force Mar McDonald with more. It all started in this industrial park. You had a guy working with a blowtorch when a projectile went into the air. And do you see the wall back there? It went beyond that brick wall and into the neighborhood beyond. The chaperones love their backyard with its water feature and expansive deck. Usually they'd be out here enjoying the day with their girls. It's riding up. Thank goodness they were inside. We heard a big explosion and we just kind of looked at each other like, what was that? That sounded like it was right by our house. Seconds later, we definitely heard something hit the house right after the explosion. It was like 10 seconds afterwards, but we weren't sure what it was. And I was kind of afraid to come by the window. It looks like a giant metal clam that hit the deck so hard it smashed in some of the wood and then shattered the rear door wall. I slowly creeped over and I looked and I seen the, uh, hunk of metal. It's like, whoa. <laughs> whoa is right. Turns out someone at a nearby business was using a blowtorch on a metal barrel and it exploded, hurtling the top through the air and right into the chaperone's home. Luckily, nobody was hurt. I definitely feel lucky that it, we weren't outside because it is a nice day today and we could have been out here with our dogs and little children. 
Sterling Heights Fire got out here, determined that the guy using the blowtorch has a hand injury but is otherwise okay. Meanwhile, the owner here has already gotten on the phone with the chaperones and told them how sorry he is and that his insurance will pick up the repair. We're in Sterling Heights. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, we are certainly glad that they're okay. We do want to update you on this situation and the story that we broke last night on Local 4 News at 5. This home in Macomb Township now reduced to rubble after a semi truck that had a blown tire goes crashing right through it. Cleanup is underway now, but it won't be easy. We're also hearing from the homeowner of that house who got a look at just how bad the damage is. This was all along 26 mile right near Omo. Here's Local 4's Jermont Terry with the latest. Well, there was one slight problem besides the devastation. There was thousands of pounds of asphalt in the trailer of this truck, and they were working diligently throughout the night and morning to remove it. But keep this in mind. The man who lived here, deputy showed up at his job telling him a semi hit the house, but he didn't think there would be nothing left of his house. 26 Mile in Omo becomes the corner everyone in Macomb Township is looking at and talking about. I heard a very loud sound like a bomb. The sounds of the semi losing control and ending up like this. After a tire blows on the rig, the semi hits two vehicles before crashing, or should we say pushing Chuck Van Fledering's house off its foundation. I was really surprised there wasn't a big plume of smoke. Chuck moved in two years ago. He just finished remodeling, and now this. Absolute awe, the humanity of it, you know, because one moment you have everything, I have nowhere to spend the night. There's nothing left of the place he cherished. Where do you go from here, Chuck? I have no clue. Thankfully, Chuck wasn't home when the semi carrying thousands of pounds of asphalt came crashing through. Looking at my furniture, I would have been underneath the rear front, the rear tire on the right side of the cab because he pushed everything into the cemetery Everything he worked for destroyed and possibly sentimental items gone too. I just brought a bunch of pictures of my kids in from the garage. Chuck keeps a good sense of humor while watching the crews try to remove the semi on top of his house. Well, I got insurance and it looks like I got a good deal on the insulation because it's all over the place. It took them several hours to get this rig out and again they spent much of the night and early morning still trying to empty the load of this trailer. Again, we can point out that everyone, the truck driver and also the other drivers that were hit in this crash walked away. People are saying it's simply miraculous, but despite this devastation, everyone is safe. Reporting in Macomb Township, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Well, they were certainly being watched over. Jamont, thank you. It is 436 now and customers at a gas station caught in a scary situation when a clerk sh shoots a would be robber. The Macomb County Sheriff's Department says the clerk inside of this mobile gas station shot a masked man who came inside demanding money from customers. Witnesses say that it was a pretty tense situation. I ran to the window and seen the clerk running out the door and with the gun in his hand and pointed down to the ground yelling, don't move, don't move. I don't know, they say they may have been a couple of shots around by my truck because they're holding my truck right now. And I gotta wait for them to release my truck. Well, thankfully, no one else was hurt. The gunman was taken to a nearby hospital. His condition not known at this hour. A man is arrested in Lapeer County for the sexual assault of a child. And investigators fear that it might not be an isolated incident. Police say Frank Green was staying at a relative's house in Columbiaville, which is about 25 miles northeast of Flint. And he was supposedly watching that relative's child while they were away. Well, a person was sent to check on the child and saw or heard something that seemed suspicious in the home and reported it to police, who then arrested Green on Monday. He's now charged with criminal sexual conduct and accosting a child. We do want to point out Green lived in Georgia and several other states before moving to our area last summer. A Michigan lawmaker proposing new accessibility signs, hoping to better portray those with disabilities. State Representative Bo LaFay from Iron Mountain says that the new signs would show active independence as opposed to helplessness. According to LaFave, the sign change would not cost taxpayers or businesses a dime. LaFave's new proposal would also take steps to remove the term handicap from the signs and communications at state and local levels. 438 is your time now. Still ahead, it's a sensitive topic for many people. When you take the keys from an older loved one, 
Though this morning, new information reveals exercising, why it can help keep older drivers behind the wheel a lot longer. But first, let's check in with Andrew and for Brandon this morning and look at our, our forecast. So we got some rain ahead. That's right, and emphasis on the word some for today. Just a few raindrops that are around now. Any more due for today? What about your weekend? More on that coming right up. Hi, this is Bernie Smavis. The Tigers' three-game winning streak is over. We've got highlights from Fenway coming up. At Matchman's Warehouse. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's 454, and in today's buzz, are you looking for a unique place to stay? Well, there was a replica russet that was built to mark the Idaho Potato Commission 75th anniversary, and it's actually been converted into a hotel in Boise. Now, it has one bedroom, as you can see there. It's got a living area, a little bit of shelving as well. The bathroom is outside in a converted silo, in case you were wondering. The giant spud toured around the country for several years before being replaced last year with a newer model. It opens late next month, though bookings are available right now on Airbnb. In case you wanted to stay there, it goes for about 200 bucks a night. Well, a stage musical based on Destiny's Child is in the works, and you can thank Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, for making this a reality. Matthew Knowles says Survivor, the Destiny's Child musical, will be told from his perspective. Survivor will take a look at what he dealt with during what he called his pioneering climb in the music industry. As you know, Knowles ma uh, managed his daughter's career both while she was in Destiny's Child and for part of her solo career before they cut their professional ties in 2011. He managed Destiny's Child as a whole too uh, as well. So the musical is expected to premiere in Houston next year. Knowles would like to see Survivor play play on both Broadway and London's West End. No word on any dates around the country just yet, but of course we'll keep you posted. Next today, right here on Local 4 News Today, local stories for you from Macomb Township, Sterling Heights and Detroit. Also back in the hospital overnight, Kelly Stafford updated her stay following additional treatment for brain surgery. She's got a message about her recovery. That's all new this morning, but first, Andrew is keeping tabs, fine tuning the forecast. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And we're still looking at the chance of a few showers for today. As you can see, the weekend, it does get chillier. I'll go into detail about your Saturday and Sunday. Plus, look at this seven day forecast once again, coming right up. Find new roads. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5 starts now. Flattened by a freak accident. We are live this morning out of Macomb County where crews are still trying to clean up the mess after a semi slams into a home yesterday evening. You're going to hear from the, the homeowner. Not today. A gas station clerk opens fire on a masked man trying to rob his store. And flying object. A Sterling Heights family hears an explosion and then has something crash at their door tell you how they made out and what happened in that situation. We've got a lot to talk about this. Yeah, morning. we do. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, knocking on the door to the weekend, and it's been a really nice week weather-wise. It certainly has. We'll get a little bit of, of what does Brandon call it? Spits or something like that? And Spits a and drizzles. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> for people who have been experiencing that and wondering what is in store for today, let's get on over to meteorologist Andrew Humphrey with a look at our first forecast. I believe you're both right. Spritz and sprinkles that are out there right now here in uh, parts of Detroit and Southeast Michigan, now just south of I-94. We saw some earlier right around Port Huron, but those have now moved away into Southern Ontario. But a few of those uh, raindrops still hitting the ground right around Luna Pier, also around Monroe, and just north of Dundee. So a few wet spots that are here and there. And we'll still see some of this on and off shower activity through the lunch hour. Not very widespread, no big washout for this morning or the midday hours. 58 degrees by noontime, and we're already starting off with cool conditions. It still gets milder today with drier conditions for the ride home. Highs around 62 degrees. What can you expect for Friday and your weekend? Does it get warmer or does it get chillier? We'll talk more about that and your seven day forecast in minutes. Now over to four live traffic. Thank you, Andrew. We are accident free this morning, and that's a good thing as you're heading out and about right now. A green on your map there, a little construction in different parts of the Metro Detroit area. We'll update you on that and any accidents that might pop up throughout the morning. So take a look at this. It looks like maybe a construction site or perhaps a demolition project, but 
Just yesterday, this was actually someone's home. Yes. That was until a semi truck slammed right through it. Right. So this morning, crews are still trying to clean up that mess. It might actually take them quite a while. We're also hearing from the, the owner of that home. Local force Nick Monticelli joining us live now in Macomb Township, right in the thick of it all. This is along 26 mile road. Nick, can you explain to us or at least try to explain how this could have happened in the first place? Yeah, I know everybody's really trying to figure that out. Let me show you the destruction here behind me. You can see what is left of the home, just a mangled mess. And you can see the basement and what's left of it. If we look closely, Mike, we can even zoom in. You can kind of see some lamps over there. You really get an idea that this was somebody's home until this happened yesterday. So we are on 26 Mile Road, just west of Omo. And I want to try to paint the picture for you. You can see the road here, 26 Mile Road, is right next to this house. So when that semi lost control, it is kind of feasible. Now, easier to understand that when the tire blew, truck lost control and just came barreling right through here into that house. I heard a very loud sound like a bomb. It wasn't, but the damage is just as bad. A tire on the semi blew and the hauler lost control, hit two vehicles and plowed into the house. Absolute awe, the humanity of it, you know, because one moment you have everything, I have nowhere to spend the night. Chuck Van Flatteren moved in two years ago and just finished remodeling. Now there's nothing left. The truck pushed the home right off the foundation. Thankfully, he was not home when the semi carrying thousands of pounds of asphalt came crashing through. Looking at my furniture, I would have been underneath the rear front, the rear tire on the right side of the cab because he pushed everything into the cemetery. His next move is to call his insurance company. But right now, he's more concerned about things that cannot be replaced. I just brought a bunch of pictures of my kids in from the garage. Despite all this, though, Chuck is trying to keep his sense of humor. Well, I got insurance and it looks like I got a good deal on the insulation because it's all over the place. All right, back out, out here live looking at the destruction again. So I know it's kind of hard to tell what all this is, but you kind of get a sense of where the home used to be and what the cleanup is going to be like. That's going to be the hardest part as we kind of get a little bit closer here. You can see there's an excavator sitting right next to us. This is still here because they have to get all of this dug back up. The truck, obviously, they finally got out of here yesterday. That was the easy part. Getting the house out of here is going to be the difficult part. Now, Rod, Rod, I do want to point out to you, too, which is um, kind of creepy in a way, is that this is also a cemetery. So the home sat right here. There's a cemetery right over here. There's a, a headstone right there. So it's going to be a careful cleanup because of everything that's here. Let me just leave it at that. We are live here in Macomb Township, Nick Monticelli. Local 4 News today. Oh, uh, you're thankful no one was hurt, but you just feel for that homeowner losing everything in an instant. Yeah, and you mentioned that it was a just freak like accident. It, it certainly was. Um, uh, he's keeping his spirits good, though, so yeah. thank goodness for that. Nick, how, how big was this home? I know it's kind of a moot point right now, but do we know the, the size of this home? Two stories, one story ranch? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't even know the answer to that. Um, I looked at Google Maps earlier trying to get a better idea. I couldn't pinpoint the house. Uh, but my understanding is that it was kind of a smaller home. It appears to be a one story from what I can tell. The basement is down there. Mm. Um, I would guess the house was maybe 1,500 square feet total. But again, you would never know that looking There's at all this left. anymore. Yeah. Uh, just awful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But thankfully, that man was not home at the time. Yeah, thank goodness he is, he is okay. Time now is 5.05. There are two new developments involving the attacks in Sri Lanka. First, the father of two suicide bombers has been arrested himself for allegedly helping his sons. And the attacks have led to a security shakeup. Sri Lanka's president has asked for the resignations of the defense secretary and the national police chief. This comes after security forces ignored intelligence reports warning of possible attacks before the bombings on Easter. ISIS has since claimed responsibility for what happened that the attacks that struck hotels and churches on Easter Sunday. Authorities remain unsure of its involvement. Customers at a gas station in Mount Clemens are caught in the crosshairs when a clerk shoots a would be robber. The Macomb County Sheriff's Department says that the clerk inside of the mobile gas station shot the masked man who came inside demanding cash from customers. Witnesses say it was a tense situation. I ran to the window and seen the clerk running out the door. 
and with the gun in his hand and pointed down to the ground yelling, don't move, don't move. I don't know, they say they may have been a couple of shots around by my truck because they're holding my truck right now. And I gotta wait for them to release my truck. Pretty scary for everyone there. No one else was hurt. The gunman was taken to a nearby hospital and his condition is not known at this time. Former Vice President Joe Biden is expected to announce his presidential bid this morning. According to sources close to Biden's campaign, he will announce the candidacy with an online video. The news comes after months of suspense over whether he would join the primary field. The former vice president, who is a clear frontrunner, will embark on a tour of early voting states in the coming weeks. This is Biden's third run for the White House. All right, it is 5.06, and it was an appearance that he really could not afford to miss, but R. Kelly was a no-show in court. And that decision, Rhonda, is going to cost the embattled singer. We'll tell you how. Plus, uh, kind of a setback for Kelly Stafford. She's back in the hospital this morning, but does have a new message to share with you. We'll have that for you coming up in just a little bit. But right now, we want to say good morning to Kim DiGiulio on assignment. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Guess where I'm at? I'm at Kobo Hall. It's the first robotics competition. Thousands of kids coming here to compete with their robots. More than seven robots, 700 robots here. I'm going to tell you all about what's going on later today, coming right up. All right, looking forward to that. And we do want to wish you a happy birthday if you're celebrating today. On this 25th day of April, our Sunshine Awards, where they are going out to Eric Hogan, turning 11 today. Kirk Phillips is 16. Shane Schneider, happy 19th birthday to you. Chloe Berg is 28. Jasmine Bass, 28 today as well. And a happy 30th birthday to Danielle Johnson. Joshua Jensen is turning 33 today. Jojo Bavel is 36. Osnita Norman, happy 44th birthday to you. Iris Hicks is 45. Eric Lundgren turning 46 today. And Mont Blair is 48. And Anita Harris, 49 today. LaShawn Price, happy 52nd birthday to you. A happy 60th birthday going out to Jeffrey Baker. Rochelle Little, happy 65th. And Gail Finley is 66 today. Happy birthday. Also celebrating birthdays today. Happy birthday going out to Andrus Andersons, Jacqueline Wid Widowicki, and Mary Willis. Happy birthday to all of you. And a happy anniversary going out to Suzanne and Kenneth Thomas celebrating their five-year wedding anniversary. Mark and Karen Tomanak celebrating 38 years together. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. So it is called the world's largest celebration of STEM, and it is happening right here in downtown Detroit. Yeah, thousands of students are in town for the first championship at Cobo Center. That's where we find local force. Kim DiGiulio, she's there this morning. A lot of smart kids. Yeah, there. our future inventors all in the house. Exactly. You may want to be nice to these kids here. They're going to be millionaires one day. You never know. Uh, but yes, there's going to be over 700 robots here. Take a look. I've been walking around and I happen to find the robot made by Renaissance High School. Now, get this. There's over uh, kids coming from all over the world, 35 different countries. So kind of cool that I came across this one right here. I'm not going to get too close because that looks like they put a lot of work into this robot. Uh, Jamie Behrman today is here to tell me about what this competition is all about. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. Okay, so we've been talking about this on the news all week, but it's this is a really big deal. I, as I mentioned, people from all over the world coming, 40,000 people going to be here today. What is this competition all about? Sure. So first is a global nonprofit. Um, it's all about getting kids interested in science and technology through robotics competitions. So here at First Championship, this is the annual culmination of all of those programs. We have students from all around the country, all around the world, coming here to celebrate not only you know their technical achievements and um, these incredible robots that they've built to play very exciting sports like challenges but also all of the teamwork and collaboration and just everything that they've learned throughout the year and now this is the 30th anniversary of this competition mm -hmm. and you were telling me earlier that the creator of this was like okay there's all of these big sports competitions out there where people you know if they're really good at sports they can go pro but why not have something like this because Everyone who gets good at this stuff can go pro, right? Exactly. Um, you know, first teaches kids, you know, the engineering, the math, you know, all of the hard STEM skills that they'll need to be successful if they want a career in science or technology. 
but it also teaches them the teamwork, the collaboration, the problem solving that they'll need to be well-rounded adults and well-rounded professionals. Oh. So, you know, in this program, there's really no reason why, as Dean likes to say, every kid can't go pro. I cannot wait to see these robots co competing. Uh, and then everyone can come today. Correct. To see the competition. The entire competition today through Saturday is free and open to the public. So, um, you know, we really want everyone to come on down. You can not only watch the competition, but come down here in the pits where the students tinker on their robots between matches. You can see the robots up close. You can interact with the students. And there are a lot of fun activities taking place all throughout the week. All right. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you. Well, you heard her. Bring the whole family. Get the kids interested in science and technology. Reporting here at Kobo, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. Back to you guys. That, that is, is awesome. Very cool. It's cool to see what the Renaissance kids are doing. I know. I'd and love you to can, see. The fact that it's free and anyone can come, yeah. and also for the kids to show off what they've been working on for months is pretty awesome, I'd, too. I'd love to see what my fellow cast technicians are working on there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and all, all the other you know. kids from 35 different countries. It's mm -hmm. pretty impressive that it's such an international event, but it's held right here in Detroit. And the Michigan chapter is, is the second largest chapter wow. in the United States, only second behind California. And they there do amazing go. work all across. Mm -hmm. the state of Michigan, but as you both mentioned, yeah. right here in Detroit Absolutely. and Southeast Michigan as well. State of innovation, yeah. right here. And the best price also, free for the family when you go down. It can inspire the engineer in your family, no matter how old or how young. Bring all the kids, young and old, ladies and gentlemen. Out there right now, we're looking at temperatures that are mostly in the 40s, cool conditions that are out there, but we're also looking at a few raindrops that are out there as well. Emphasis on the word few. You can see four live radar, not loaded with a ton of rain that's out there, just a few sprinkles or light showers here and there. The ones that are here and there now, in places like Monroe County, right around the city of Monroe itself, and along 75, just down to the south of the city of Detroit. Greater amounts of rain are well to our south and well to our west. For now, this little disturbance to our south is going to inch a little bit farther to the north, keeping that chance of scattered showers with us for this morning and for the middle part of the day. So don't be surprised by a midday shower for the lunch hour, but then drier conditions for this afternoon. We're looking at mild conditions later today with a high of 62. You're looking live at downtown Detroit. Yes, we have ships still going up and down the Detroit River, no matter what time of day or morning. And you're seeing that live right now with 49 degrees over at the airport, feeling pretty good out there. Temperatures a little higher than yesterday at this time and winds at around six miles per hour. Now you'll notice the temperature over the next seven days dips quite a bit, just in time for the weekend, I'm afraid. So don't put those jackets and coats away just yet. It does get cooler and more raw for both Saturday and Sunday, especially with cloudy skies. We'll talk about that chance of showers in a second. It's a little bit chillier for our friends in Oxford, 47 degrees, but everyone pretty much in the same boat. Temperatures are actually pretty uniform mostly in the middle and upper 40s for right now, on our way to 60 or more later this afternoon, despite the clouds overhead. And even with some of the rain out there, visibility is still looking good. You can see more shower activity in the forecast by 9 a.m. and through the lunch hour. Much of it goes away by 4 p.m. and afterward, so dry conditions picking the kids up from school. But later tonight, as that disturbance to our south sort of rotates around and moves off and intensifies, a better chance of showers and rain later on tonight into early Friday morning. But then by Friday afternoon, it gets sunnier again and milder. Low 60s today, 40s overnight with that chance of rain, especially after midnight, 63 for tomorrow. Then for your weekend, yes, it does get cloudier and it gets chillier. Grab those umbrellas again, plan on some indoor activities, lows in the 30s, highs in the 50s. First robotics championships will still be here, so that's a great indoor activity. But don't worry, it does get milder next week with highs back in the upper 50s and 60s by next Tuesday and Wednesday. Back over to you with four live traffic. All right, Andrew, thank you. We're dealing with a little bit of construction this morning that we want to let you know about. 696, right at Telegraph, both the east and westbound side, will have one lane open starting at 9 a.m., and that'll go until 3 p.m. And then also on 696, right at Telegraph, on the east and westbound sides as well, we'll have one lane blocked starting at 3 p.m., and that'll go until until about 5 p.m. We'll have much more information on that. And uh, if any accidents pop up throughout the morning, coming up in just a little bit. Let's check in with Bernie Smilovitz now. For 
Welcome to Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Four Live Radar capturing a few raindrops that are out there, but not that many, and these showers are diminishing as we speak. Later on today, we can expect temperatures up to around 62 degrees, but be prepared for some midday showers. Maybe lunch indoors is a good option. Sunrise this morning is at 638. Again, 62 for a high and drier for the ride home. Over to Four Live Traffic. All right, Andrew, thank you. Let's take a live look at uh, the maps on your screen there. A lot of green around Metro Detroit, so no accidents to report. Well, take a look at this. If you're a golfer, you're not used to seeing that on golf courses around here. A special <laughs> guest is caught wandering along the green at a South Carolina golf course. This huge alligator was spotted taking a stroll along the fairway at Long Cove Club down in Hilton Head, South Carolina. So this is a 10 foot Ooh. long alligator, 10 feet wow, long. It's huge. Letting you know that this is his golf course. Is that someone on the driving range right there? Uh, yes, it is. Ooh. Very close, in fact. Mm. The alligator made his way through several greens and then a driving range, as you mentioned, before heading back into the lagoon. But before he left, he had enough time for a quick photo out with a golf bag and a clock. Wow. The closest thing that we have to that experience is somebody wearing some gator boots on the golf course. That would be about it. That's, that's and that would close. be just as unusual. <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen anything that enormous? I You're have, an avid I golfer have. down in Florida. Yes, in Florida and in Georgia, I've seen the alligators on the golf course. And what do you do? And they're not when usually up on their legs like that. Usually they're kind of slithering on their bellies. Yeah. Do you just run? What do you I do? I skip that hole. You yeah. skip, skip that sure hole. Do. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't take away from what you call it, like your par or your score. I just give myself a par for <laughs> making it through. <laughs> <laughs> 528 is your time. we got a lot of news stories coming up for you in our next half hour, including stories out of Sterling Heights and Dearborn. Also, I had an alert that's being issued by the Birmingham School District. We'll tell you what that's all about. And it came out of nowhere, a flying object crashing right into a Macomb County family's door. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. Well, they heard it, but they never saw it coming. An accidental flying object, an AFO, landed right on a Sterling Heights family's front doorstep. And you're going to need your umbrella this morning. Make sure that you have it just in case. Local forecaster is tracking some on and off rain showers for your Thursday. See what I did there? I did. AFO. I did. She gave me that look like <laughs> I, 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 I got gotcha. <laughs> Like really? <laughs> I mean, at this point, they know what it is. It was just they accidental. Do. It was not right. unidentified. There you go. <laughs> so I'm going to trademark that. Oh, let's get over to Andrew and for Brandon. <laughs> I don't know. On the creativity <laughs> level with all these innovators in town, all the students over at Covo, I don't know. And he hasn't even said Friday Eve yet. Oh, no. <laughs> shockingly. But Friday Eve is more acceptable. Don't get right? him started. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, this show from just yesterday. For, oh, I know you're big fans out there. I know you were watching yesterday with Friday Eve Eve. Out there right now, though, let's get back to weather, shall we? We're looking at some rain showers that were there for the overnight hours, just in time for folks while they were sleeping, which is really the best time in many instances, right? Well, those showers have been diminishing over the past hour or two. So you can see that here on this loop that I have for you. Some heavier showers that are down across the Ohio border have now diminished somewhat into sprinkles and very light showers in northern portions of Monroe County, including right around Frenchtown, also around Gibraltar, and they will continue to diminish this morning. But some more will flare up by late this morning and into the into the early afternoon, basically during the midday hours around lunchtime. 58 degrees though around lunchtime, so it still gets milder today after cool 40s this morning. In fact, we make it up to 62 degrees for a high by 4 p.m. We're starting off in the upper 40s, 50 degrees for our friends over in Flint. So it'll be a mild day today, but just a little wet, especially as we get into those midday hours. We'll talk more about your weekend, including Friday and next week in your seven day forecast in minutes. Now over to four live traffic. Thank you, Andrew. We do want to keep you updated with construction because the projects are just popping up everywhere these days. Westbound 8 Mile, just before Woodward Avenue, you're going to find a lane block beginning at 7 o'clock this morning until 5 this evening, and that will be construction today and tomorrow again on Westbound 8 Mile, just before Woodward. It is 533 and we want to talk about this freak accident involving an out of control semi that leaves two vehicles crushed and another man homeless. Officials say a semi carrying 150 pounds of asphalt lost control. The driver lost control after blowing a tire, hitting two vehicles before crashing and demolishing this house. 
Now, the driver of the semi only suffered minor injuries, and thankfully, no one was inside of the home at the time of the crash. Cleanup is happening right now, but the bed of the truck will have to be emptied first. We are going to be back at the scene at 6 a.m. with our Nick Monticelli, who's there live, to give us a look. A home in Sterling Heights was damaged after a strange metal object came flying into the backyard. The family heard some type of blast and then found debris right at their door along Gatewood Drive near Mound and 17 Mile. Let's get to Nick Monticelli with more on their close call. Good morning. I want you to look at this video again. It is unbelievable that nobody got seriously hurt considering what was going on here. This metal barrel just flying into a home. It actually came from a company nearby, went over a concrete wall and into this house all entire street over. The chaperones love their backyard and usually they'd be out enjoying the day with their kids. It's riding up. But yesterday, it's a good thing they were inside. We heard a big explosion and we just kind of looked at each other like, what was that? That sounded like it was right by our house. Then just seconds after hearing that explosion. We definitely heard something hit the house right after the explosion. It was like 10 seconds afterwards, but we weren't sure what it was. And I was kind of afraid to come by the window. It looks like a giant metal clam that hit the deck so hard it smashed some of the wood and then shattered their rear door wall. I slowly creeped over and I looked and I seen the uh, hunk of metal. It's like, whoa. <laughs> It turns out a worker at a nearby business was using a blowtorch on a metal drum. It was empty, but there was residual liquid inside, enough to create fumes that exploded when the man started cutting with that blowtorch. I definitely feel lucky that it, we weren't outside because it is a nice day today and we could have been out here with our dogs and little children. Again, nobody was seriously hurt in this. The worker did have some injuries to his hand and the owner of that company has already called the chaperones and apologized for what happened and said his insurance will cover all of the repairs. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. There is an investigation underway at Pontiac High School after a female student claims that she was sexually assaulted. On Wednesday morning, a student told school officials that she had been sexually assaulted by another male student. The school immediately contacted the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, reviewed security video, and sources tell us here at Local 4 that lockers actually blocked the camera's view, but both students were in the area for about seven minutes. Now, the student accused of committing the crime is currently in juvenile detention. Charges are pending. We are learning of a stranger danger incident reported by a Birmingham Middle School student. It happened on Tuesday at the bus stop at Longcrest and Pierce Street, which is technically in the city of Southfield. The student told the bus driver a suspicious man was taking photos, describing him as a man in his 40s or 50s wearing a brown jacket and glasses. No students were approached, but parents are being told to stay on the lookout and, of course, alert their children as well. Neighbors in Madison Heights are fighting to save the life of Boomer the Pitbull. Boomer was placed on death row for allegedly killing a Chihuahua. Well, supporters claim that there's no evidence showing that Boomer actually committed that crime. The dog's case is now actually heading to the state court of appeals. It is 537 and we do have a sad update in that case of the missing five year old boy. This is now a homicide investigation and his parents have been charged. And ahead of the carport at 6 a.m., a story that every parent needs to hear this morning, especially Jason is revealing the first ever recommendations for screen time for young children. Kim? Good morning, guys. We're here at Kobo, the first robotics competition. More than 700 robots here. Take a look, Bloomfield Hills High School. This is the winner of the 2018 Detroit Championship. Last year, so much to talk about. That's coming right up. Find new roads. Welcome back, everybody. In Good Health, Lego has revealed a new project that is aimed at helping the blind and visually impaired children learn Braille. Braille Bricks will allow children to learn the touch writing system through playing. The bricks feature the studs used for characters in the Braille alphabet, as well as printed characters allowing sighted people to read the bricks. The final set will be approximately 250 bricks covering the complete Braille alphabet, numbers from 0 to 9, and 
mass symbols. Lego says that they also will be fully compatible with existing Lego bricks. They're expected to launch in 2020. Good for them. I think that is so important. Isn't that nice? Incredible that they're doing yes. that. Yes. 542 is your time. Right now we want to head on back over to Kobo Center where the first robotics championship is taking place. Yes, we are talking about the future innovators. These students from 35 different countries, Kim. Uh, pretty impressive that we have that many incredible students just right here in the Detroit area because you keep finding local exhibits there. <laughs> I know, I'm just kind of scoping them out, but there is so many uh, Michigan students who are participating in this, which means I think the future of Michigan is bright, but there's, again, 700 robots here today telling us all about this whole competition. We've been talking about it all week. We've got Toby Clark. He's the program manager. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. How are you? I'm great. Good. I'm happy that you've been kind of breaking this down for me because it's a little confusing. There's a lot going on. Can you, uh, well, we were talking about there's, you know, so many students that are going to be here, mm -hmm. ages 6 to 18, but the high school competition, that's really where it's exciting, right? Absolutely. It's one of the very important programs for us, and it gives the students a real chance for experiential learning, which means using their hands, using their minds to really solve problems and come out and show what they've done. And they show it with like a competition. We have a competition. We have six fields set up at Kobo. We'd love to have everybody in Detroit come down and visit it. It's free. Come on in and register and come out and talk to the students in the pits. It's not just about sitting in the stands. It's actually coming out and seeing what they're doing. Yeah, I really want to emphasize that because we are so lucky that it's right here in our own backyard. You can bring your whole family. As he said, it's absolutely free. You can just come in. You can come back to the pit where they're working on their machines, their robots. Just how cool is that? It's unbelievable unbelievably cool actually and uh, it's a great opportunity to really figure out what they're doing and why they're doing it but more importantly what hasn't worked for them and they had to fix some things and try some things and that didn't work and dealing with that and coming up with a solution is even more important sometimes than just how well your robot runs and you said the students are more than happy to show you like what they're working on they love to they love to tell you their story how they got here why they're here and that sort of thing we have teams from 35 countries it's boys it's girls it's totally eth ethnically diverse it doesn't matter and that's really cool to see them all working together and helping be successful. Amazing. Well, and we got to take advantage. Like I said, it's in our backyard. It was here last year. It's here this year. We've got to take advantage of it. So come on down. It's free here at Kobo. Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Back to you guys. You'll be surrounded by all those smart kids. Absolutely. You know? I, I would even think that some of the automotive companies looking for the future engineers yeah. might want to go do some recruiting over there. Do some recruiting, <laughs> maybe get them involved in like an early internship program or something it. like that. Absolutely. Well, let's get over to Andrew, who is very passionate about science and technology. I know you're going to be over there today. That's right. And you know what's great? The adults who are involved as well, not only the teachers who help guide the teams, but it wouldn't be anything without volunteers including right here in Southeast Michigan. Plenty of professional engineers volunteer their time and energy to guide those teams as well. So as you visit, you can learn to be a volunteer too. And there's a communications component. So not only if you're into science and engineering, also if you're into communications. We're looking at temperatures right now, mostly in the 40s. Here on 4 Live Radar, the showers that we've been seeing, a lot of them have been diminishing. You got a couple of flare-ups also in parts of Livingston County at this hour. But the main action in terms of rain is down to our south. Despite that, some of it is is going to inch a little bit farther to the north, especially what you see here in southern Indiana, southern Ohio. So there is the chance of a shower or two once again as we get closer to the midday hours. So we're not done with the rain yet. We had some showers overnight. They diminished somewhat, but then they flare up again uh, after around 9, 10 o'clock this morning. And then they diminish again by the afternoon commute. So that, for that reason, we'll see a little more sunshine and it gets milder. It's all, it already feels pretty good with temperatures close to 50 degrees right now. We'll be closer to 60 degrees or just a bit more between 60 and 65 just like yesterday. Now for your weekend forecast, yes, it does get chillier with cloudier skies and a chance of wetness coming back due to a separate system. Another system moves in from the west with more rain and some colder air. So temperatures barely make it to 50 degrees. Got to hold on to our jackets and coats and be prepared for some of those wet conditions.
conditions may be indoor activities like the first world competition with robotics over at the convention center. Maybe that's a great idea for this weekend. We're looking at 49 right now for our friends in Pontiac. Temperatures also in the 40s in Ann Arbor, 49 for our friends and neighbors over in Monroe. Everyone's pretty much in the, in the same boat with those middle and upper 40s. These temperatures we're seeing easily 6, 8, 11 degrees higher than what they were 24 hours ago. You see these bits of green still flaring up as we get into the afternoon hours. Later tonight, as that system to our south moves farther to the north and east, a better chance of rain after midnight tonight. And then again, that second chance of rain with chillier air for the weekend. In between, we're looking at 62 for today, 63 for tomorrow, so mild for the next couple of days, then chilly and raw for the weekend, but then milder again by the middle of next week. Now over to 4Live Traffic. All right, thank you, Andrew. We do want to update you on a problem that we just picked up, and it is a car fire on the ramp from Gratiot onto I-75. It is the southbound side, that ramp there from Gratiot onto I-75. So make sure that you are cautious as you work your way around there. It is a car fire. It is 547 now, and singer R. Kelly has lost a civil lawsuit by default after he didn't show up to court. Records show that Kelly was served a, a court summons last month while locked up in jail for failing to pay back child support, but he never filed an appearance in the lawsuit. The case stems from a woman who claims the singer sexually assaulted and abused her back in 1998 when she was only 16 years old. The woman filed a lawsuit asking for $50,000 in damages, and if R. Kelly does not get an attorney to challenge the suit, he could be ordered to pay damages as soon as next month. The parents of a missing five-year-old boy have now officially been charged with his murder. Officers discovered the body of A.J. Friend uh, buried in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic. Investigators say that the boy's parents, Joanna Cunningham and Andrew Friend, had them lying to had been lying to police, first reporting him missing in a 911 call last week. After days of maintaining their innocence, police say that on Wednesday morning they confronted the parents with cell phone evidence and the parents then led investigators to the site where AJ's body was buried. If convicted, both parents will face life in prison. Such a disturbing story. A Michigan lawmaker is proposing new accessibility signs in hopes to better portray those with disabilities. State Representative Bo Lefebvre from Iron Mountain says that new signs, the new signs would show active independence as opposed to helplessness. And there are uh, the examples there on the left and right of your screen. Lefebvre uh, wants the sign changed to not cost taxpayers and says that it wouldn't, not even businesses. It wouldn't cost them a dime. New York and Connecticut have already adapted similar laws. Lefebvre's new proposal would also take steps to remove the term handicap from signs and communications at state and local levels. So it certainly shows them more active on that uh, image there on Absolutely. the right. Absolutely. So. 548, 540, 550 is your time now. Let's get that right. The domination continues for current Jeopardy champion James Holhauser. No signs of him stopping here. Last night, he continued his impressive run by winning his 15th straight show on Jeopardy, which brings his total earnings to $1.1 million because of his whole theory on how he bets. Mm -hmm. That puts the 34-year-old professional sports better, by the way, fourth of all time in consecutive wins for Jeopardy. He also holds the top seven best single day totals in Jeopardy history as well. Holhauser credits that to his aggressive strategy of seeking high value questions first and also betting big on the daily double. Well, good for him. 34 <laughs> years old. He's very young. He's very young and very smart. He's got a lot of money already. <laughs> <laughs> good for him. Uh, we would love to give a quick shout out to yes. our 5 a.m. director, Randy Henry, after he was recently inducted into the Illinois State University Broadcast Hall of Fame. And here he is with his award and picture with his beautiful wife, Carmen. Yes, that is where he went to college. Randy was one of several Redbird alumni honored by the School of Communication. So good for him. congratulations to Randy. Yes, in a great school. 551, we are kicking off a new segment coming up right here on Local 4 News today. It's aimed at making life a little easier for you. It's called Back to Basics. And this morning, Kim DiGiulio will be starting us in the kitchen. Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Starting off on the mild side, but a little wet in some areas. You can see that there in Livingston County, right around Pinckney, also around South Lyon. 
But later on this morning, we'll see another flare up. We can see the showers that were overhead uh, uh, over parts of Monroe County have diminished. There's another chance of showers at noontime. Now it still gets milder today with a drier afternoon, a high of 62 degrees. Back over to you. All right, so this morning we are excited. We are kicking off a new segment here on Local 4 News today that is aimed at making life a little bit easier for you. So we are teaming up with professionals to give us a refresher on some of our everyday tasks. And we found the perfect woman to do it. Our very own Kim <laughs> DiGiulio. Let's check in with her now. We're excited about this, Kim. What are you cooking up this morning? I am excited about this too. Basically, back to basics. It's all going to be about learning those basic skills. I'm reaching out to local professionals. So for segment one, week one, I teamed up with Chef Steve from Bergerum over in Bingham Farms, and he's teaching me how to flip an egg. Today, we're going to be learning the basic cooking technique of flipping an egg. And joining me today is Chef Steve from Bergerum on Telegraph and 13 Miles. So, Steve, Flipping an egg seems so simple, but every time I try it, there's yolk everywhere. I have a perfect remedy for that. Okay. <laughs> Chef Steve says learning the egg flipping technique is all about muscle memory. So save your eggs. You can practice that flip with a piece of bread instead. So just put the bread into the pan and then just kind of bring back in a, a motion like that. When you've got it down, bring out a nonstick pan that you only use for eggs nothing else. And this pan will last forever if you just cook eggs in it and they'll never stick. Next, oil the pan, then give it a minute to let the oil heat up. And I'm going to go right into the oil oh. and that's going to go ahead and the oil is going to go ahead and surround the eggs. With clean hands, you can then break the egg white to get it cooking faster without overcooking the yolk. Next, you'll season it with salt and pepper. You'll want to cook the egg whites all the way through before it's time to flip. Three, two, one. I'm going to go ahead and flip that egg. Nicely done. Cook on the other side for about 45 seconds for over easy and longer for a yolk that's more well done. So let's dig in and take a look at that. So and you've got the practice from flipping that piece of bread. Flipping that bread. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Big fan of eggs. Have them every morning before work. You may not know that about me, but yeah, it's amazing. Once you get that muscle memory down, it's a piece of cake. So I want to know if you have any uh, tips for me that you are, you want to know anything that we could do for Back to Basics. So head on over to our Facebook page and give me some suggestions. Or if you are a local professional, you want to teach me something, I'd love to hear from you. Back to you guys. My Just question the... is, because we didn't see you actually flip the oh. egg. Were you able to do it? Rhonda, every morning I'm flipping eggs. Okay, oh. just a flick of the wrist. Impressive. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Why has Kim never made us eggs? <laughs> I know. Well, she's making them every morning. morning. I should, could surely throw a couple more in the uh, skillet. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Wait a while. 57 is your time, everybody. Ahead in our 6 o'clock hour, local stories from Macomb Township, Mount Clemens, and Detroit. Plus, sickened by salmonella, the outbreak that's impacting several states here in Michigan. Also ahead, millennials may not be as healthy as they think they are. More on that when we come back in one minute. Stay with us, everybody. In Friday. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Good Thursday morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Rhonda Walker. I'm Everett Cash me on your Friday Eve, and we're following several top stories this morning. First, a Macomb County home destroyed after semi loses control. The driver loses control and plows right through the home. We'll tell you how this all happened. Also ahead, she is missing her children. We're talking about Kelly Stafford, wife of Lions quarterback Matt Stafford posting an update overnight from her hospital room on Instagram after suffering some complications from her brain surgery. We'll let you know how she's doing just ahead. And a world competition happening right here in Detroit, downtown Detroit in fact. Thousands of students, smart kids and their robots all under one roof. Our Kim DiGiulio is there live. We'll be checking in with her shortly. Yes, all of our future engineers and innovators. Andrew Humphrey joining us to talk about our forecast for our 40,000 guests from all over the world. That's right. Oh, love all those STEM fields. Done tons of, story of on, uh, stories on robotics and all the achievements of Detroiters, especially our students in that category.
category. Good to see them from all over the world right here in Detroit and Southeast Michigan. We're starting off on the cool side with temperatures in the 40s and in some places a few raindrops here and there right around Whitmore Lake, also around South Lyon, just south of Howell and in southern portions of Livingston County. So count on a few spots of drizzle and light rain as we go through this morning. No big washout, no heavy down downpours to be concerned about, but something to keep us on our toes. Same thing through the midday hours, but by this afternoon, a bit drier and certainly milder. We go from 40s through the 50s into the low 60s by 4 p.m. Sunrise this morning is at 638. Any more rain for Friday or your weekend? That and your seven day forecast in minutes. Now over to four live traffic. All right, thank you, Andrew. And we do want to update you on an accident. Northbound side of the Southfield Freeway, there is an accident right at I-96, and it is blocking the left lane, so watch out for that. We could start to see some delays. So far, so good, though, there. And then that car fire is still on the Gratiot ramp to southbound I-75, and it is blocking the left lane this morning. And the cleanup continues in this freak accident in Macomb Township, where a home used to be. Yeah, that home was right there on 26 mile. Now it has been obliterated after a driver semi lost control last night. Let's uh, turn things over to local force Nick Monticelli. He is there live in front of what used to be a home. Nick, have you heard from the homeowner? Uh, we talked to the homeowner yesterday and he's actually in pretty good spirits considering. But yeah, you really would have no idea this was a home by looking at it today. It's really difficult to even see what's left of what was inside the home at this point. Now I want to kind of lay the, uh, the the groundwork here. So if you look over here, this is 26 mile road here in Macomb Township. The semi truck hauling all that asphalt blew a tire. It lost control and then because the home is so close to the roadway, he just came over here going westbound and drove right into that home. Now, I want to show you this picture. This kind of gives you a better idea of what used to be here. On the left side of your screen is the before. The right side of your screen is the after. Now the home was painted after that picture was taken on Google Maps there. It's about a thousand square feet and so now it's a thousand square feet of demolished nothing. I heard a very loud sound like a bomb. It wasn't, but the damage is just as bad. A tire on the semi blew and the hauler lost control, hit two vehicles and plowed into the house. Absolute awe the humanity of it, you know, because one moment you have everything, I have nowhere to spend the night. Chuck Van Flatteren moved in two years ago and just finished remodeling. Now there's nothing left. The truck pushed the home right off the foundation. Thankfully, he was not home when the semi carrying thousands of pounds of asphalt came crashing through. Looking at my furniture, I would have been underneath the rear front, the rear tire on the right side of the cab because he pushed everything into the cemetery. His next move is to call his insurance company, but right now he's more concerned about things that cannot be replaced. I just brought a bunch of pictures of my kids in from the garage. Despite all this, though, Chuck is trying to keep his sense of humor. Well, I got insurance and it looks like I got a good deal on the insulation because it's all over the place. All right, back out here live again, looking at all of the damage. Now, as we mentioned, there were no injuries, despite the truck also hitting two other vehicles. The truck driver is also OK. There's a whole lot of work to be done here. You can see this is also lined up right next to a cemetery, so they've got to be careful as they dig and clean some of this up. The excavator is still parked over here on the left hand side, but again, it's going to take some time. We talked about the fact that Chuck had just remodeled this home and I'm not talking about a little bit. I did a little bit of research and they took it all the way down to the studs and rebuilt everything inside granite countertops, even though it was a small home. They turn it into what they wanted it to be. Now it's nothing. We're live here in Macomb Township, Nick Bonasani, local four news today. Now it's nothing, but he's certainly keeping a sense of humor and again, thankful he's alive. 605 is your time now. Customers caught in a, a very scary situation when a clerk shoots a, a robber or a would be robber at a gas station over in Mount Clemens. The Macomb County Sheriff's Department says the clerk inside of the mobile gas station shot a masked man who came inside and was demanding money from customers. Witnesses say things got kind of tense. I ran to the window and seen the clerk running out the door and with the gun in his hand and pointed down to the ground yelling, don't move, don't move. I don't know. They say they may have been a couple of shots around by my truck because they're holding my truck right now. 
and I gotta wait for him to release my truck. Well, here's the good news. Nobody was hurt, but that gunman was taken. No one else was hurt, I should say. The gunman who was shot at was taken to a nearby hospital. His condition has not been released. Kelly Stafford is in the hospital this morning, awake and missing her family after days of recovering from brain surgery. Stafford returned to the hospital for overnight observations after struggling to taper off of steroids and pain medications following her procedure. Around 3 o'clock this morning, she actually made a post on Instagram sharing her struggle of not being able to sleep and also missing her children. She says, quote, I can't pick them up. They can't climb on me. We can't go on adventures. But what's worse is I can't be the mom that I want to be for them right now, not physically, not mentally, not emotionally. And there is more to that that she posted. If you want to read it on her Instagram page, KB Stafford, but you certainly feel yeah, for her. Yeah, definitely do. If you do follow her on Instagram, you know that she is always with her kids. Mm -hmm. She has twins and another child and they're just adorable and she's a very active mom. So I'm sure it's definitely a struggle for her not being able to, to, to be with them, but we hope they are reunited very soon. Yes, but I think it, we should also point out in that video, aside from the nurse who was helping her, it looked like that was Matt Stafford helping oh, her yeah, as well, if right I'm not mistaken. By, hers is right there so, by his wife's side for sure. Doing what any husband would do, Absolutely. so we certainly wish her well. Yes, we are. 6.07 is your time and we want to get to these students from around the world. 35 different countries, 40,000 students in downtown for a robotics competition. And also competing are the robots themselves. Our Kim DeGiulio <laughs> joining us live now at Kobo Center <laughs> for the first robotics competition. I've seen this in person many a years and it's always like impressive how, how, how they do how <laughs> they do that. <laughs> It is super impressive, and it's hard to wrap your head around the fact that this many, that, that many people are going to be here in Kobo. Now, the high schoolers are working on these massive robots that you see right here, but it all starts somewhere, right? You've got to start when you're a kid, so you start with Legos. And here to tell us all about that, Kim Weirman. So you are the head of the Lego competition, first Lego competition, correct? Yes, so we have first Lego League. It's for our students ages 9 to 16, and they come from all over the world. We have about 40,000 teams teams competing this year. Unbelievable. Okay, so they're making things like this. I mean, this is fun. People do this for fun, but it's a competition. Can you tell us what they're making for this, for example? Sure. Through our partnership with Lego Education, uh, they create custom sets for us every year. So there are about 15 models on a playing field that's about four feet by eight feet. You can't just go to a toy store and get this. No, this is custom to the program because it's theme based and there's right. a reason behind it. So this year they were studying space in our into orbit season. And this is one of the models that's representative of the space station and the, the robot would be programmed to run by itself. So there's no driver or anything. So they program it ahead of time. It leaves a, a base, it comes out and it does missions such as put the astronaut Gerhard into the safely into the space capsule, deliver different units to the space capsule, and then it would navigate around the field and uh, complete other missions with the models that they created. So cool. And just real quick, I want to talk about, you know, bringing your family to this event. It's free. And especially what's the importance of getting kids involved in STEM so young? So kids are naturally curious, creative, innovative. And if we can capture this young, we can also capture the fact that they can do this. So especially with young women, it's a very important age upper elementary, um, middle school, where they're deciding whether or not they think they can do this. So they're learning coding, they're learning how to build, they're learning engineering principles, and they're learning to be innovative because uh, First Lego League also has a project component where they are researching real world problems. Wow. Well, setting them up for a great future, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Kim, Thank for joining you. us this morning. And don't forget to come today, tomorrow, and Saturday. It's free. You can check out any of these amazing robots here at Kobo. Reporting at Kobo, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. Pretty impressive. Kim, thank you. And we have breaking news into our newsroom. Not much of a surprise, though. Former Vice President Joe Biden now making it official. He officially launched his 2020 Democratic presidential campaign. He made the announcement on his website just moments ago. And we will have much more on the announcement coming up in our next half hour. And coming up right now, Help Wanted if you are over 50. Why McDonald's is looking to up the age of its workforce. Plus, Jason is here with new recommendations for children's screen time. Good morning. If your child spends any time on your tablet or smartphone, it may be too much. The guidelines world health experts are laying out for the very first time after this.
All righty, welcome back, everybody. It is time for today's trivia. Jeopardy related. Current Jeopardy champ James Holzhauer has 15 consecutive wins. He's doing good so far. Ken Jennings, you probably know, holds the record for the longest winning streak with how many total wins? That is today's trivia question. Head on over to clickondetroit.com. If you know the answer, click on the contest page and you may win a Tormina's Pizza gift card. Don't forget to include a picture of yourself. We're revealing the winner coming up during our 6.30 half hour. We're back in a minute. All right, welcome back everybody. 6.14 is your time now. And we're talking about something this morning that a lot of parents struggle with how much screen time should you allow your child to have if at all any yes and trying to limit it can mm -hmm. be a challenge because it's such a useful way to keep the kids occupied That's a good way to put it the world health organization that was weighing in getting in on the conversation and making recommendations that may shock some parents actually jason well, it all depends on the age, but the younger they are, the less time, if any, they should have on phones and or tablets. WHO, World Health Organization, recommends toddlers under the age of two should not spend any time in front of screens. Children between the ages of two and four should be limited to one hour of screen time per day. The organization encourages at least three hours of physical activity for infants and young children. Multiple studies have linked lesser screen time to better brain function and overall health benefits. So let's go to the comments from our Facebook page to see what you have to say about this local four nation. Bree in the carport, I suffer from chronic horrific pain. Some days I cannot get out of bed. If my kids are off from school, the iPad and TV are saviors. Uh, Tammy, my grandson can use the phone better than me. Sad. Uh, in my house, says Lindsay, the TV is on a lot, but my kids might only watch an hour of it a couple of times a day. They are too busy playing and destroying my house. <laughs> playing in and destroying my house. Ashley says, I was disappointed to find out that kids have to use computers at such a young age now for school. I wanted to focus more on books, not tablets and other screens. Roger says, my kids won't see broadcast TV until 12 and won't get any screen time until 5. Roger, get them hooked on Local 4 early. Come on, man. That's going to do it for the comments. What do you think? Sound off on our Local 4 Facebook page. I grew up around, I had a TV in my room at 9. Wow. It was on constantly. I watched all the newscasts, yeah. all the stations. And here I am on TV. <laughs> and you turned out okay, right. you know. We, I think my so. parents really limited screen time. Did they really? No TV in our rooms, no computers in our rooms, none of that. Well, we were very limited. And as a result, I don't watch a lot of television. I watch well, a lot of news. Well, listen, you <laughs> try taking a, a tablet or an iPhone away from a two year old, Andrew, <laughs> at a restaurant. I know you know. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Out there right now, though, activities certainly the way to go. Well, maybe some indoor activities a little bit later this morning in middle part of the day due to a few rain showers that are around. We've got a few around for this morning. You see that here in parts of Livingston County, also in parts of Monroe County. Down here in southern Monroe County, Lambertville getting a few more sprinkles uh, in the area. A more decent shower occurring right now along 96 north of Whitmore Lake and closer to the Howell and Brighton area at this hour. This is going to move into western Oakland County before it moves off to the north and east. A lot more rain to our south and a lot more to our west. What we see here to our south is going to move just to our north and east, giving us another chance of rain for tonight. But here's today's forecast on and off showers for both this morning and the midday hours. So if there is any wetness, these are the times of day where we'll have it by the afternoon and evening. It gets a little drier again. It also gets milder highs around 62 degrees. Still looking good out there. Even with the clouds overhead, we're looking at 48 degrees this weekend. It gets chillier with temperatures in the low 50s. We'll talk about the chance of showers for Saturday and Sunday in a second. But first 47 right now in Oxford, 47 over in Saline, middle and upper 40s all around. Later today, we'll have a high of 62 with on and off showers through the lunchtime hour. We're looking at 48 overnight, another chance of rain for tonight, but by tomorrow afternoon, it gets sunnier again, 63 for your Friday. A separate system brings in chillier, cloudier, wetter conditions for your weekend, so be prepared for that, but then milder by the middle of next week. That is a look at your weather forecast. Now let's take a look at our weather window brought to you by 1-800 Hansons. Some beautiful flowers along with the American flag out there. Bernie Zetner, a wonderful photographer with these pictures for you this morning. More on your weather forecast again 
in just about 10 minutes. Over to 4 Live Traffic. All right, let's take a quick look for you this morning. Northbound Southfield Freeway right at I-96. The left lane is blocked there. We'll keep you updated on what's going on. There's an accident right there. And then let's take a look from Sky 4. It's over that car fire we were telling you about earlier. Right at I-75 and 375, the interchange there. Uh, it looks like the traffic is moving smoothly. We'll keep you posted if there are any other accidents that pop up this morning. Thank you, Everad. 618 is your time and turning our attention to consumer headlines this morning. McDonald's is hiring, but you have to be above a certain age. Also ahead, Facebook is bracing for a massive fine. But first, we want to get to the salmonella warning. Maribel Aber joins us now live from NASDAQ with more on all those stories this morning. Maribel? Good morning, Rhonda. People in 10 states have been sickened with salmonella linked to melons. 117 people in all have been affected. The pre-cut melon slices were sold at a variety of retailers, including Walmart, Target, and Trader Joe's. The fruit was distributed to 16 states, including Michigan. Cato Foods has recalled the melon slices. For more details, check out clickondetroit.com. Facebook says it could be hit with a fine with as much as 50, or excuse me, 50, five, five billion from the FTC for its handling of customer data. It's likely to be the largest penalty ever from a U.S. regulator against a big U.S. tech firm. Facebook has already set aside three billion in preparation for the fine. The FTC has been investigating Facebook for more than a year. The company has been trying to rebound from a number of data issues, including a massive security breach and the Cambridge Analytica scandal. McDonald's is turning to older Americans to fill 250,000 jobs in its restaurants. The fast food chain is partnering with AARP to try and fill the jobs. McDonald's will post the open positions on AARP's job board. It's hoping to fill spots on its breakfast and lunch shifts. Those are shifts when younger workers are either in school or not available to work. So that makes sense, Rhonda. It certainly does. Thank you, Maribel. Meanwhile, let's talk about what Coca-Cola is doing, stepping out of its comfort zone with a new drink, Coke Coffee. The company is embracing the ready-to-drink coffee trend by offering a drink that has more caffeine and less sugar than your traditional can of Coca-Cola. So Coke Coffee is expected to hit shelves worldwide by the end of the year. Sign me up. <laughs> I, I would definitely take a cold coffee, especially this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Late <laughs> night. A, a little bit. <laughs> LCA was hopping last night. 621 is your time. Uh, let's talk about some health conscious millennials. Uh, apparently, they might not be that healthy. There's a new study that says who is healthier and why. We'll tell you that coming up in good health. But first, a Texas twister, a tornado adding to some very wild weather down in the Lone Star State. Video next. Hansons. Welcome back, everybody, here at 624. A close call for <laughs> residents in Bryan, Texas, when a twister forms right in the sky nearby. This is just one example of the extreme weather that's been hitting Texas. On Wednesday, the National Weather Service says that these deadly storms are headed east, expected to hit the Gulf Coast region sometime today and also parts of the East Coast tomorrow. Thankfully, it's not headed this direction, Andrew. That severe weather certainly is staying uh, down south. We're looking at a few scattered showers that are around right now. You can see that in Livingston County, now entering parts of western Oakland County. Later today, on and off showers continue through the midday hours, drier for the ride home. It gets milder today, a high of 62. More on Friday and your weekend in moments. Now over to 4 Live Traffic. All right, Andrew, thank you. Taking a look at the roadways, and there you see a problem right at that interchange of the Southfield Freeway and I-96. It is the Southfield Freeway on the northbound side. You can see where the accident is, and it is northbound right at I-96. It is blocking the left lane, and you can also see it's impacting I-96 in the eastbound direction, trying to get on the Southfield Freeway backed up there as well. Turning to good health now at 625, millennials, a lot of them often pride themselves for their love of wellness with lifestyles that include yoga, meditation, and fitness. Well, despite the reputation for valuing health and wellness, it turns out millennials were actually in worse health than Generation X used to be. According to a new report, millennials are suffering from record high rates of issues like depression and anxiety compared to Generation X. Many fear that this will have a serious effect on the economy over the next two decades, including health care costs. 
Next at 630, local stories for you from Madison Heights, Sterling Heights, and Detroit. And speaking of health care costs, insurance for your pets, it could save you some money, but is it really worth it? Because it'll cost you some money, too. Help Me Hank has a closer look at what you should look out for before you make that decision. We're back in a moment. Um. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And breaking news, Joe Biden making it official. He is running for president in 2020. Plus danger right outside their front door. A Macomb County family stunned when a fly object damages their home. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for waking up with us here at Local 4 News today. We got a lot to talk about, a lot of random freak accidents happening, yeah. uh, specifically in Macomb County. We'll break that all down in just a little bit. Yes, we will. We also want to get you updated with the forecast. And you're in for Brandon for us this morning, and it sounds like we're going to need our umbrellas today. That's right. In some spots, you will. It's not widespread rain, thank goodness, so there are some dry spots that are out there. That being said, be on guard for a few raindrops for this morning. We're looking at some of those showers right now in portions of Livingston County. You can see that here in yellow showing up on four live radar. This just moved over uh, I-96 in parts of Livingston County and Western Oakland County. Still moving to the north and east, so places like Commerce Township, Union Lake, also around Milford, we'll see a decent downpour within the next five to ten minutes. And as we go into the midday hours, we'll still have flare-ups and development of a few showers on and off as well. But it does get milder today. In the afternoon, I think drier than right now, so the ride home will be better. We're looking at 62 for a high later this afternoon. Any more rain for your Friday? What about your weekend? That part of your forecast is minutes away. Now over to 4 Live Traffic. Thank you, Andrew. Let's take uh, a look at the maps. We are green in most of the areas here in Metro Detroit, so we are back to accident free and that situation that was on the Southfield Freeway in 996 that is gone. We'll let you know if any accidents pop up throughout the morning. And now let's get to our breaking news. Just now, the crowded field of Democrats running for president just got a little more crowded. Yeah, let's turn things over to Jason Carr, joining us in studio now. Former Vice President Joe Biden just made it official. It's been the worst kept secret in Washington. The former VP and best bud to President Obama officially launched his own presidential bid with an internet video. Today I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. Folks, America's an idea, an idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone is treated with dignity and gives hate no safe harbor. This is Biden's third presidential campaign. This announcement will be followed by a rally in Pittsburgh and visits to four early voting states next week. Biden's hoping to win back Pennsylvania and other Rust Belt states that President Trump won in 2016. And he enters a crowded field of nearly two dozen candidates. He's already the front runner, though, according to several polls. Election were held tomorrow, he would be the nominee. Joe Biden against Donald Trump? Are you kidding me? It's not even a close call. I don't see Joe Biden as a threat. No, I don't see him as a threat. Uh, I think he's only a threat to himself. Biden will have to answer for his record, including supporting the Iraq war and unverified claims from women who say his touch made them uncomfortable. Biden is counting on his decades of support for women. Behind the scenes, we're told Biden has been working the phones to build up his war chest, and so have some of his supporters. You can see his entire video announcement on clickondetroit.com. Evrod, Rhonda. All right. Jason, thank you. We are moving over to a, a very bizarre situation that happened to one local family. They heard a blast, but they had no idea just how close the danger from that blast was. Absolutely. The Sterling Heights family is shaken, but they are all okay after a strange metal object came flying right into their yard and through a window. Nick Monticelli has more on how it all happened and where it came from. Good morning. I want you to look at this video again. It is unbelievable that nobody got seriously hurt considering what was going on here. This metal barrel just flying into a home. It actually came from a company nearby, went over a concrete wall and into this house on entire street over. The chaperones love their backyard and usually they'd be out enjoying the day with their kids. 
It's riding up. But yesterday, it's a good thing they were inside. We heard a big explosion and we just kind of looked at each other like, what was that? That sounded like it was right by our house. Then just seconds after hearing that explosion. We definitely heard something hit the house right after the explosion. It was like 10 seconds afterwards, but we weren't sure what it was. And I was kind of afraid to come by the window. It looks like a giant metal clam that hit the deck so hard, it smashed some of the wood and then shattered their rear door wall. I slowly creeped over and I looked and I seen the uh, hunk of metal. It's like, whoa. <laughs> It turns out a worker at a nearby business was using a blowtorch on a metal drum. It was empty, but there was residual liquid inside, enough to create fumes that exploded when the man started cutting with that blowtorch. I definitely feel lucky that it, we weren't outside because it is a nice day today and we could have been out here with our dogs and little children. Again, nobody was seriously hurt in this. The worker did have some injuries to his hand and the owner of that company has already called the chaperones and apologized for what happened and said his insurance will cover all of the repairs. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Right now, we want to get to some stories that we're following for you all across Metro Detroit this morning. Those stories are out of Detroit, Madison Heights, but we do want to begin here in Pontiac for you this morning. That's where an investigation is now underway at Pontiac High School after a female student claims that she was sexually assaulted at school by a male student. The student notified school officials on Wednesday morning about the alleged attack. The school immediately contacted the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. The student accused of committing the crime is currently in juvenile detention pending charges. And at Madison Heights now, the fight continues to save the life of Boomer the Pitbull. Boomer was placed on death row for allegedly killing a Chihuahua. Supporters, however, claim that there's no evidence showing Boomer even committed a crime. Billboards have gone up advocating for Boomer like this one, whose case is now heading to the State Court of Appeals. And Detroit police releasing new information from an audit of the city's sixth precinct. The investigation was sparked by a racially insensitive Snapchat video that got national attention back in February and resulted in the firing of an officer. Detroit Police Chief James Craig says that the audit team conducted more than 100 interviews and zeroed in on four commanders. One was demoted, another retired, and two others are getting more training. Chief Craig says that that kind of behavior is simply unacceptable in his department. Many in the precinct became racially tone deaf. It became ingrained in the culture, and some did not see it as being wrong. Since the video, a new captain and two sergeants have been added to the 6th Precinct. Officers also have to go through a new diversity training program as well as peer review training. It's an investment in your pet's health, but is pet insurance the best move for you? We're talking to the experts coming up new this morning. And let's get back to Kim DiGiolio joining us live inside of Kobo Center for the first robotics competition. Good morning. Good morning. The future of tech and engineering is right here. Students traveling from all over the world for this competition. But coming up, I'll introduce you to a team that only had to travel down I-75 to get here. .com. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 641, and for thousands of students all around the world, Weeks of hard work has led them to downtown Detroit today. Yes, it certainly has. They're going to be competing in the first robotics competition at Kobo Center. We're talking about 700 different teams, and we can go for free and watch them. Kim? Good morning, guys. That's right. Anyone welcome to come here today, tomorrow, and Saturday to see this competition. Students from all over the world, but... I happen to find some from right here in Metro Detroit from Clarkston High School. I've got Jack, I've got Val. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so you guys actually won one of these competitions last year. Which one was it? Um, we ended up winning the world championship last year, and then this year we were able to win our Kettering District. So Amazing. So you guys, I know you guys have smart minds. What are you working on this year? What does your robot do? So our robot can do just about everything on the field. We're able to manipulate all of the game pieces at all levels of the rocket ship and the cargo ship. So this is really cool because of a, lot of, a lot of our features are also autonomous. And then, oh, that's good to know for our future, of course. You guys, I know you're set for life. Uh, but I wanted to talk about when you guys are building this, when did you start it? What's the process like? 
Well, we actually have a kickoff at the very start of the year, almost right around New Year's, and we meet every year, and it's a, it's a weekend event. You know, we come in, and it's, you know, 9 to 9 on Saturday and 9 to 9 on Sunday, and we're just planning our robot, and then we have six weeks to build before our first com competition, and it's a non-stop grind for that entire six weeks. How much fun is this coming down to the whole thing, the competition, right in your own backyard? It's so much fun, and to have it right here in Detroit is just amazing because we have all of our families, our sponsors, our local businesses coming down here to support us. Awesome, and I want to talk to your field coach. This is Kyle, and you were a part of the team last year that won, and your kids were a part of that team, and now your kids are off doing great things. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's just amazing. Last year, I, I was very blessed because my son was my drive co or one of my drivers, and to be able to win the world championship for robotics here in Clarkston at Ford Field, it was his second time at Ford Field because he also won the Clarkston won the football class A division last year so it was just amazing to be able to walk down that tunnel at the end of the season with your son and just realize the the how grand this was it was just enormous it was amazing and you said your son's at Michigan Tech now yes he is Cody's up at Michigan Tech and he's studying mechanical engineering thanks awesome. to this program awesome well thank you so much guys good luck to you today and again anyone's welcome to come here you can see the kids are filing in right now it's super exciting and come bring the whole family there's a lot you can see and it's a great time Reporting here at Kobo, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. Back to you guys. And you Very see. inspiring for other young people as Absolutely. well. I mean, these are going to be the future engineers for our automotive companies. So it is... Very impressive what they're yes. able to create at such a young age. You heard all of what they said. You are now smarter just for watching that segment. Absolutely. That's why you got to watch every day. Shout out to Clarkson High School, every though, for day. being world champions. Hopefully they can repeat. And the event is all weekend. As you mentioned, it's free to the public. So, yeah. yes, families come downtown. Show your kids what uh, they can do when they get older. As early as elementary school, in fact. Out there right now, we're looking at a few showers as you head to downtown Detroit, whether it's from Clarkson or from Livingston County. That's where we're seeing a little bit of rain falling, mainly north of 8 Mile right now, from Livingston County into western uh, Oakland County around the Novi area, also a little bit farther to the east. This is going to spread in places like uh, Waterford, also Pontiac, and eventually into Auburn Hills within the next 15 to 30 minutes. So you can count on some of those rain showers expanding, mainly north of 8 Mile. Got a lot more rain uh, of here down to the south. This storm system, in fact, in Texas, bringing severe weather, will give us a chance of rain later tonight, but minus the severity. Later on today, this is what you can expect. During daylight hours, on and off showers from now and through the midday hours. Now, it does get milder this afternoon, drier for the ride home, temperatures up to around 62 degrees. It's already mild or cool, if you will, out there right now, with a mixture of gray and orange showing up in the sky, looking absolutely beautiful, with 48 degrees over at the airport. Winds at around three miles per hour. This weekend, it turns chillier. And we have some more wet weather on the way. So a rather raw weekend, good for indoor activities, just like the first robotics championship happening right here in downtown Detroit. So another good reason to attend. You can stay indoors where it's warm, dry, and comfortable. We're looking at 44 right now in Emmett. That's one of our chillier spots. Holly checking in at around 49 degrees. Same thing in Clarkston. 48 over at Metro Airport. 49 in Monroe. Everyone pretty much in the same boat with those middle and upper 40s. So later on today, you can see these bits of green still showing up later this morning and into the afternoon. By this evening, as that storm ramps up, a lot of the moisture is going to be well to our east, but we're going to be right on the edge. So there is a chance of rain tonight closer to midnight and afterward. But after Friday morning, it becomes uh, sunnier. But then right on its heels, another system on the way for the weekend, not only bringing wet weather, but also chillier weather. So mild for today and tomorrow. A little wetness today, drier by Friday afternoon. Highs in the low 60s both days. This weekend, chilly and wet and cloudy. Temps in the low 50s. Milder by the middle of next week. Now into four live traffic. We have some problems out there. If you travel I-275 near Six Mile, this is going to impact both directions, but the accident is on the southbound side of Six Mile, but the right lane is blocked and also both shoulders and sometimes the gawkers on the other side like to take a look. So 275 southbound right there at Six Mile. Watch out for delays building in that area. And if you are traveling through the Ann Arbor area, smooth sailing here, US 23 to M14, that's sky four high above and it looks good so far this morning. All right, so we all love our pets, and that's why planning for their health and their health care can be just as important as planning for your own. Absolutely. So we're talking about pet insurance this morning. It can be a great way to make sure that unexpected expenses don't throw off your finances. Our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, shows us why it's important to pay attention to all of the requirements when you are looking to purchase an insurance plan. 
Medical bills for your pet, they can add up and they can be costly. So is pet insurance the right move? Take a look. Come on. Good boy, good boy. Cody is a high energy golden doodle who's just over a year old. We've always had dogs. This is my first big breed. We've always had little dogs like Yorkies or Bichons, but he's my first big one. Right after Cody joined the family, his owner, Ariana, took out pet insurance, a policy with Pet Plan. Four months later, she figured it would come in handy when there was a problem with her dog. We just noticed him limping one day, um, came in the house and wasn't, you know, himself. So we brought him back to the vet to get x-rays. And that's when they noticed that his femur was fractured. Cody needed surgery. The cost, $2,700. But when Ariana submitted the claim to pet plan. And they came back to us and said, because we hadn't gotten a wellness visit when the policy was open, that the claims were being denied. It was something in their terms and conditions. After that denial, Ariana paid for the surgery out of pocket, then canceled her policy. She estimates that she paid about $300 in premiums and she wants a refund. Pet Plan Insurance responded, saying the website clearly states a pet must be examined by a vet 60 days before enrolling or within 30 days afterwards. And that exam is required to establish a baseline for your pet's health. In addition, the company says they send each new customer a welcome email that restates that requirement. In this case, the claim was denied because that exam never happened. I wish that we would have been informed or even notified when we go to log on or pay our payments, like something flagging, you guys don't have your your wellness visit, nothing's covered. We were very upset because, you know, we got this insurance thinking, okay, if anything happens to him, he's covered. Then. I mean, unfortunately, something happened to him. And, you know, now knowing that he's not covered is just, you know, a slap in the face to us. A great reminder to read the fine print when purchasing a pet insurance policy and whenever you sign on the dotted line. We have more advice from the experts about the pros and cons of pet insurance, and we'll put all that information for you on the consumer page of our website. Click on Detroit.com. I'm consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Back to you. It can, it can get pricey. I have a friend whose who's cat, yeah. an orange cat, ate a, a, a fake flower, uh -huh. and they had to spend like thousands of dollars wow. to get that cat fixed. Yeah, so the insurance makes sense, but Oof. you read the fine print. Yeah. Great information there. 650 is your time, and wedding season is almost here. So coming up tomorrow morning, a warning if you need to say I can't to watching your friends say I do because you can't afford it. Why declining invitations may impact more than your finances. That's tomorrow at 6 a.m. All right, we want to give you the answer to today's trivia, and it's about current Jeopardy champ James Holzhauer. He has 15 consecutive wins. At 6 a.m., we had asked you, what is Ken Jennings' record for most consecutive wins on Jeopardy? And Terrace Hammonds got it right. He's from Canton. You are the winner of the Tormina's Pizza gift card. It is 74 wins for Ken Jennings. And congratulations to Terrace on getting the answer right. And of course, for tuning in to us each morning. We're back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Former Vice President Joe Biden announcing his presidential bid this morning with an online video. This follows months of suspense over whether Biden would join the race or not. This is Biden's third time, by the way, on his run for the White House. In stories to watch for this morning, a cleanup is underway in Macomb Township after a semi transporting asphalt loses control after blowing a tire. The truck hit two vehicles before eventually crashing and into and demolishing this house. And believe it or not, the driver, only person injured, suffering minor injuries. The NFL draft just hours away from kicking off in Nashville, and the Lions have the eighth overall pick this year. Here's Jason Carr with a few of the players that the Lions could be looking at when the first round begins. Good morning again. Lions fans will not want to hear it, but a lot of experts have the team picking tight end TJ Hawkinson from Iowa, the most valued tight end in the draft. He's big, he's fast. He caught six touchdown passes last year for the Hawkeyes. The team may also look to bolster Matt Patricia's defense in Houston defensive tackle Ed Oliver. Oliver is a freak athlete that can rush the quarterback and also help out in the run game. And two Michigan men could rep the Honolulu Blue and Silver, defensive tackle Rashawn Gary and linebacker Devin Bush. Both players are expected to go quickly in the first round. Andrew. 
Thank you very much, Jason. We're still looking at a few showers that are out there, mainly north of 8 Mile, cutting across portions of Oakland County, eventually here into Macomb County within the next 15 to 30 minutes. So wet conditions generally north of the city. But we will see another chance of a shower or two during the midday hours. Now it gets milder today with a high of 62 degrees. More rain for tonight. Some sunshine by Friday afternoon. Mild again with 63. And get ready for a chilly, gray, and wet weekend. Good day for indoor activities like the first robotics championships. Temperatures in the low 50s. Those temperatures are going in the wrong direction, Andrew. Uh, and you might want to change direction this morning. I-275 in the southbound direction at 6 Mile. The backups are building fast. That accident blocking the right lane and also both shoulders. So it is really slow through that stretch. And of course, Jason has Live in the D coming up ahead at 10. What do you guys have planned for the show today? All right, we are going to get creative. We have new ways to make your recipes a little extra with the extras you already have in your pantry or spice rack or fridge. Okay. Plus, one city is ready to give you a great deal on dinner starting this weekend. Mm -hmm. And our vet is in to answer your questions about your pet. That's all today. 10 a.m. Live in the D, Local right. 4. Well, we hope you will join us for that, and we hope you will join us tomorrow morning and every morning here on Local 4 News today, because you know what they say. Miss, miss a, day, a day, miss a lot. lot. <laughs> okay, have a great day, everybody. The Today Show is next. See you tomorrow.